Welcome! So, everybody uses grappling hooks. Everybody loves grappling hooks. Some people love grappling hooks, right? And, uh, I mean, you know, there are some movie characters that use them, like, uh, I mean, heaps, you know, you got like Batman. Who else? Yeah, and of course, you also have um, this little goofball bot that, that I've been working on who also uses a grappling hook. So, if you're watching this video, then there's a good chance that you also want to use a grappling hook in one of your animations. So I'm going to show you how I did it and hopefully you'll be able to improve on my system and that'll be awesome. Alright, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is an animation that I'm currently working on. I have a little robot who is an absolute goofball and he is trying to get across this chasm and he's going to use a, uh, a grappling hook to do that and this is how it goes. Yes, so in order to make this happen, I needed a grappling hook that would follow the robot most of the time. And then when he shoots it into the rock, I needed the grappling hook end to stop following the robot so that he could move and it would stay there. But I still wanted this end over here to follow him. Uh, so yeah, let me show you how I did that. Right, so in order to make the grappling hook, we need a hook and we need a barrel of some sort. Uh, I mean, for the, for the robot, I just wherever he is, here he is, uh, I just basically made it come out of like a little cylinder and that looked okay. Um, so for the hook, I'll just leave the modeling of that up to you. Um, you can model it how you like. Let's select the hook, shift S, cursor to selected, and we want the, the median point to be somewhere near the end of our barrel. And let's go curve, Vizier. And if you look at it in top view, you'll see it's all curved. We don't want that, so let's grab this handle, rotate that one by 45 degrees, and then select all, and then rotate that by 90 degrees. Okay, back in side view. Let's scale it down, but not too much. Let's grab this handle, put it over roughly near the end here, and with the other handle, we want to do the same. But we want it to be more inside the hook. It's better to be probably about there. All right. If we go to the curve panel, let's go down to bevel, so depth, and just add a bit of depth for that. You can see it. It's just added some depth there. Uh, let's just leave it at, I'm, I'm going to leave it at 0 0.01, but depending on what you're doing, you might want it to be a different thickness. Okay, so with this handle selected, let's hit Control H, hook to new object. And we'll, we will do the same with this one. Control H, hook to new object, and that gives us a couple of empties to work with. Got a couple of massive empties, so let's just scale those down by themselves. Uh, doesn't matter what scale they are. If we move this empty, it moves that end of the curve, and if we move this empty, the other end. So what we want to do now, and it's actually just a good quality of life thing, is to select the curve, because this, as you can see, it has its own, still has retained a bit of its autonomy. Um, actually, I can show you that by grabbing these, um, these empties and moving. See, the, the curve doesn't go fully with it, which is a little bit bizarre, but there we are. Okay, so with the curve selected, shift select the cylinder and go control P, set parent to object, and that'll just be a lot more helpful. Okay, so for this empty, let's shift select the barrel as well and go control P, set parent to object, and this empty we want to parent to the hook, doing the same process. So that if we move the hook, you'll see that it gets moved around and the curve goes with it. With this empty, well, it does its own thing, but if we, oops, if we move the barrel, we can go like this and it follows it around, which is quite nice. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a good sign we're, we're getting there. And it looks to me like these handles might be a little bit too small, so let's just scale those up. But then you get that weird thing happening. So you don't want to do it too much. We'll scale that one up as well. Okay, so we have the barrel. But now we want the hook to follow the barrel. So with the hook selected, let's go into the object constraint panel and add in a child of constraint. Uh, we can just do um, the eyedropper and set the target to be the cylinder. Uh, vertex group doesn't matter. And what that is going to do is allow us to move the cylinder and it's going to act as if the hook has been parented to the cylinder. The cool part is though, it gives us a few more controls. So this influence here will control whether it's uh, if it's at one, then it's fully parented to the to the cylinder, and zero, then it's not parented at all. Um, 
Awesome. So let's just set up a quick animation. So at frame one, let's keyframe with I, location rotation. Let's go to frame 20, move it along like that, location rotation. Let's go 25, rotate it somewhere, doesn't really matter where. Uh, and then we'll do location rotation. So it's going to look like this. Perfect. Okay. So now we want to attach the hook to this cube. Uh, okay, let's go. So if the cylinder is at frame 25, let's start at frame 30. And then we can adjust it later anyway. Uh, let's add in a keyframe for the hook. Go forward to frame 40. And we'll just put the hook up here. It doesn't really matter where you go. Let's do this uh, so I can show you a couple of extra little things further down the road. And yes, yeah, so we'll add in another location rotation keyframe. Looks like that. A little bit too slow, so let's just okay, move the uh, keyframe over. Cool, perfect. All right, so now when we move the cylinder, well, it's not it's not exactly swinging around, is it? We want the hook to stay behind on the cube. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit goofy because when we so we have the hook here, it's keyframed, and if we go okay on the keyframe, we'll go add a, a keyframe to the influence at one, go to the next keyframe, and then when we reduce the influence to zero, and look at, yep, what is that? That's, that's, that's terrible, we don't want that at all. Um, so, let's just undo that, just scrubbing through the, the keyframes will fix that. If we go to object and apply, there is a setting or a button here that says visual transform. So if we click that, now what happens? That's just really, yep, but don't panic because if we add in a keyframe and then we reduce this influence down to zero, lo and behold, suddenly it's, it's where it's supposed to be. Super bizarre, but here we are. And it works, so that's, that's, that's excellent. And now, if we move, oops, if we move the cylinder, suddenly the hook stays where it is. But here's the cool part. Back here, the hook still follows the cylinder. So it's fantastic. And this is why I wanted to, to make a video on, on the system, because it's actually a really cool system, even though it's really weird to try and get working. What do we need to do next? Okay, well, let's, let's try getting the swinging, because other weird things show up when you try to do that. Uh, let's select the hook and go Shift S cursor to selected, and then we'll hit the, the full stop on the keyboard, and then we will set the pivot point to be 3D cursor. And actually while we're at it, let's go Shift A, add in a circle, rotate that along the Y by 90, and we'll scale that up to be approximately where we want the, the swinging point to be um, for the grappling hook barrel. And because what that will do is, physically speaking, the uh, wherever the, the hook is, well, that will become the central the central point that everything will rotate around. So you can basically draw a circle around it, and that will get you an accurate, or at least an accurate enough, um, visual animation, which is really cool. Okay, so let's go frame 40, add in a keyframe for it to start at, and then we'll go to frame 50, and we can rotate that, and... We get a couple of weird things, but let's just do that. Put it there, add in a keyframe. And it's kind of weird because when you do that, that's what happens. It doesn't even follow the curve, and that's why I put the curve there. So it's quite good. So just uh, somewhere in the middle, just put it down there, add in a keyframe. And now it kind of fills in a little bit better. And you can add in a couple of extra filler keyframes. That one's, little, that one's all right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doable. Um, yeah, that, that's sufficient. I definitely recommend making that curve go a lot smoother, but for the interest of time, I will leave it as it is. So what happens is, let's say the hook went up here. Well, it's going to start clipping through. The cool part is, is that because the, the curve maintains some of its own agency, we can add a keyframe around about here. And go like that, 
the next keyframe when it starts to clip, we can move this um, the curve or the, the median point of the curve up to the point where the corner of the the cube where the and um, where it starts to clip, and we'll add a keyframe. Now what happens is it still clips a little bit, so we can just manually adjust that, and uh, it's a little bit silly, but yeah, if you find a better a better method, absolutely, I'd love to I'd love to um, to hear about it in the comments, um, and we can all help each other out. There we go. I mean, yeah. So again, um, you can use the, the same um, methods to just clean the animation up a lot, a lot. Okay, and you can see here it's not perfect. So you'd want to add in a, a filler keyframe here and just really help to um, yeah to add a bit more finesse to the animation. Um, but it's quite cool because, and admittedly, physically speaking again, when it kinks up there, it'll probably cause this cylinder to to actually get pulled up here somewhere, probably rotate a bit more. So let's, uh, let's go back to the medium point pivot um, with the full stop button and rotate that a bit more. We'll add a keyframe like that, but that means again that of course we have to, uh, we have to relocate this curve so unfortunately this method is a bit labor intensive. So if it's not absolute, absolutely essential to have your hook up here, definitely I recommend putting it in the bottom, you know, somewhere in there, um, because then you don't have to worry about the extra physics around it. Um, alternatively, you could try experimenting with a cloth physics, um, a cloth simulation, although I haven't done that. Um, I, I like to avoid the simulations. The simulations are a little bit questionable in Blender sometimes and also take up a lot of processing power. Okay, so we got that. I mean, it actually almost looks alright. No, it doesn't. Um, yes, actually, let's get rid of some of these keyframes. That one's probably fine. Famous last words. Alright, so... Get the idea. You, now you can animate it. That's really cool. So something that I find quite interesting with this is I must have made my robot slightly different because when I rotate these on the robot, and I can show you that, when I rotate these empties, not that one. Oh yes. So with this one, I did a copy rotation on this one, and part of the reason for that is that when he swings. It creates kind of like an S shape, and if you rotate him like that, because this is copying the rotation of this MD, it all just kind of fixes itself up, which is quite nice. Okay, so the reason why this one's different from this one is that, th so this, if we go forward, okay, is actually it's actually offset, right? So this is kind of how what it looks like. The median points here, and the whole thing is just actually a little bit offset and that is what creates that um that extra movement but because we've been so exact with this one uh let's see yeah since we've been so exact with setting this one up it doesn't have that weird quirk that so we don't have to we don't have to try and fix it um, if you wanted it to be a little bit funny like that with the, the extra curve um is you can just offset this a little bit you can even scale it up a bit like that, and what that will do is when you rotate it now, it does some interesting things like that. Um, this one doesn't, so that's just where it comes down to just experimenting with the location of this handle. I mean, probably don't want it there, but uh, maybe here. Um, because when it rotates now, you can see it, it's, um, it's hide those. You can see that the curve is curving differently, so we can move it around, and then you're getting that weird kind of kind of curve. And then when you combine that with moving this around, you can get all sorts of interesting situations happening. Um, but yeah, so you can keep it exact if you want, and that that that'll probably be fine. But this gives you some extra options for 
um, forgiving the, the rope a bit of character if that's what you're after. But yeah, so that is how I did this grappling hook over here. Um, oh yes, if you're wondering how I did... Right, so the last thing is how did I get the hook to attach to the rock and then have that move all seamlessly like that. Uh, it's basically the same thing. What I did was I just swapped it over so I had a second child of constraint. Oh, I set the target to be the rock and uh, you know, I just did a little swapperoo with the influence of these two constraints. I, I did it over time while it was flying through the air because at the time I didn't know about the, um, the applying of the visual transform. And one thing that's actually worth uh, noting, and I actually didn't have this problem with this one for some reason, but over here, when I when I do it again, let's go to the hook and we'll duplicate the child of constraint. Get rid of that and then select the cube. It's really bizarre, but if I increase the influence of this constraint, check this out. Ta-da! What on earth is that? What causes it to be really warped like that? I actually don't know. I had a, a bit of a look into it and couldn't find the cause. However, there is good news. It's actually really easy to fix. All you have to do is deactivate the scale and all of a sudden it's fine again. So that's really good. Okay, let's take the influence back to zero. We're on frame 35, so let's add a keyframe with it at zero. Let's go to frame 36. We want it to go to an influence of one. Well, this one's keyframed at zero, so that's good. Uh, here, let's go object, apply visual transform. And then, I mean, nothing happened. So let's put the influence to one. Well, it's maintained its uh, its rotation, so that's that's good because all we need to do. Oh yes, take the influence back to zero. Make sure that if you hit Shift ES, cursor to selected, the cursor is there on the selected, because if we put the influence back to one, add a keyframe, go Shift ES, selection to cursor. Now it's back to where we want it, and what we can do, and now we just add a keyframe, location rotation, that should be exactly what we need. Nice, there we go. So if we move the cube, the hook follows the cube. We can even rotate the cube and the hook follows the cube. If we move this around, the hook no longer follows it. Rotate it, hook doesn't follow it. It is good to go. Um, so I think that is everything that I did in the... Uh, the grappling hook system, of course, I didn't end up doing the copy rotation, although it's, very, it's really easy. You just do copy rotation, use the eyedropper tool on the empty, and then now it follows it. Um, and yeah, so that's everything. Uh, hope you found something useful. If you managed to improve on the system, I would love to hear about it in the comments, and we can all help each other out to improve and learn and just make awesome animations. Thanks for watching.